morning YouTubers. Uh, right, it's a double brew day today. I'm up bright and, bright and breezy, cup of coffee in hand. Um, water's nearly up to temp. Gonna mash it in a minute. There's been some brewery upgrades. Let me show you. Put some shelving up. Finally got all of uh, my brewing stuff out of boxes, which is awesome. Um, and that's it, but I've got space for my laptop now, uh, which is great. I'm sure loads of you use laptops when you're brewing. So what am I making today? I am making a user upper of the hops um, IPA. So I had a load of, load of hops just sat in the freezer, like 15 grams of this and 20 grams of that. And you know the deal. So uh, kitchen sink brew today. Um, that's this morning. And then this afternoon I am brewing a Huel Melon and Equinot New England IPA. That's session strength, about 5%. Um, which I'm hoping is going to be uh, a really good beer. So I shall check back in after I've mashed in. Uh, I just missed my, uh, overshot my temps because I was chatting to you guys a minute ago. So anyway, um, whilst I'm waiting for that to cool down, which is recirky at the moment, I'll talk you through the recipe. Um, so the user upper IPA, I'm using some of my old grains as well that I had left over. So the recipe is five kilos of golden promise, uh, 850 grams of wheat malt, 750 grams of flaked oats. 250 grams of Caragold, gold 200 grams of vienna malt 200 grams of aromatic malt and 100 grams of crystal 30. so there's a uh, quite an eclectic grist going on here which i think comes up at 7.35 kilos in total uh the hops going in um it's mostly late additions. There are there is 30 minute boil additions, which is Cascade and Columbus, and then there is a 20 minute whirlpool, which is 30 grams of Cinco, uh, and that's it. And then the dry hop is Columbus and Mosaic could be interesting um i'm obviously making some water adjustments the og is 1061 shooting for 5.9 percent abv um so i think um well in range for a good ipa i'm going for a full body so the mash temp is 69 degrees which hopefully I'm going to hold. It's not, not too cold today, which is good. It's been a struggle to try and keep temps um, at the right zone, especially brewing in the garage in the winter. So I'm looking forward to it warming up a bit. It's going to be a lot easier to keep temps uh, controlled. Hold on one second. We're good. Um... Uh, I'm going to be brewing this with USO5, brewing, fermenting, sorry, fermenting this with USO5. Uh, whilst you want to know, the colour comes in at 12.4 EBC. So it's going to be fairly light coloured, despite some of the crystal malts that are going in. But they really are quite low. So, um, yeah, let's get brewing. So it's something I've been thinking about. Um, a problem I've had last couple of brews is I use a keggle like this, which I do brew in the bag. I recently got a new bag uh, for it, uh, and I also use like a, a hoist to get the bag out, just because it's a fuck of a lot easier. Uh, but what I'm finding is when I want to squeeze the bag, like in the kettle obviously i've got this like rim thing here right 
and it makes just makes it such a mess because it all catches on here and disappears down this little hole here. There's another one on the other side. And then it just streams in between the insulation. It just makes one big sticky mess, right? So what I'm thinking is take an old fermentation bucket, which I've used for a breaded beer before. So actually I don't use very often. Uh, this is exactly the same or slightly smaller than the diameter of the opening of the pot. I'm going to cut that down, put some holes in the bottom. That will slip in underneath the bag whilst once it's hoisted, the bag will sit in the bucket and then I can squeeze to my heart's content without making an effing mess everywhere. So that's the plan. Hopefully it'll work. We'll see. Right, that's it. Finished recirking. We're now at strike temp, which is 74 point six, seventy-five. 75. Yeah, 75 degrees. So I'm going to mash in. Ooh, I'm sure you don't want to watch me mash in. Right, that's me mashed in. Let's check the temp. I'm pretty sure I checked it with uh, the probe at the top. It came in at 68, which is a little low. According to this, uh, we're bang on 69. Uh, maybe a little high, 70. But that is a probe at the bottom. I checked the top, it was at 68. So in between those two numbers, 69, we're all good. Um, I checked the mash pH as well. Um, that was showing as 5.27. Um, I'm just checking a small sample and well, that's coming out backwards on the screen. But it's coming in about 5.5. Uh, so I'm quite happy with that. I don't think that needs adjusting, which is all good in the hood. Speaking of pH meters, um, I have this one, which is a cheapy one from Amazon. I think maybe it was 20, 20 quid, 30 quid, uh, which comparatively for pH meters is cheap. Um, I've been using this since maybe August time. And it hasn't failed me yet, but I think it's important to look after them. So just make sure you're quite gentle with it. Um, give it a rinse under water as soon as you've used it. Just rinse the probe, uh, dry it off with some kitchen towel. And uh, mine seems to have not failed yet, which is um, a good few months. So I'd recommend these. I think they're, they're um, value for money. Right guys, smash is done, uh, 60 minutes, and I am just mashing out. So I need to raise it by about 10 degrees. And I'm gonna add the Magnum hops, which I forgot to mention in the recipe, which is a first wort hop addition, um, just to round out the bitterness a little bit. Uh, so I'm gonna add that now. Okay, so uh, I'm just mashing out now, which I am recirculating whilst we, uh, whilst I mash out. Um, so you can see the colour. I haven't really got fantastic clarity, but that's probably uh, because of the oats and the wheat in there. So I was actually going for more of a uh, cloudy IPA, to be honest. Um, in fact, I've based a small part of the recipe on a verdant beer uh, pulp I think um, and they use a lot of wheat and oats so it's kind of not a New England IPA but similar kind of grist just with more crystal malt and lots of hops so lots of IBU so really making it more of an IPA rather than a 
rather than lots of late additions, low IBUs, lots of aroma flavour. So I'm going for a more balanced IPA type recipe. Uh, anyway, I'm waffling, so I'll let you know once the mash is done and we can start the boil. Right, next up is the experiment with the new sieve, colander, bag drainer. So this should tuck nicely into the pot and then I should be able to squeeze without making any mess, which is going to be really good. So I'll, um, I'll make sure you get to see a bit of that. Um, you want to watch me squeeze a bag? Yeah? Here we go then. Hoist away. Okay, that's heavy. Right, this out. Shit. That's the bucket on the floor. Fucking savage. Right. Pop that in there. Oh. Right, as you can tell, this is a, a wholly new experiment. I think I might just lift the bag manually. Right, she's in. She's in. A little bit of a mess getting that out. Also, it doesn't sit perfectly in the bucket, but uh, we can live with that. Let's tie that off. Get my gloves on. Right, let's give her a squeeze. I have to let that off a little bit. Here we go. Put that down there. Right. Tie that off just in case everything goes peak tongue. Right. Okay, that's interesting. Ah, shit. Okay. There is a hole in the side of the bucket where I had a tap, which is, stuff is coming out that hole, which is slightly annoying, so I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do about that. Okay. Some revisions needed, I think. I think I need holes on the side of the bucket. Okay, right, wait there. Let's get the boil going at least. Uh, right, oh you fucking prick. So did the experiment work? Uh, yes, I think it did. I had to midway through stop, drill some more holes, actually round this sort of almost the bottom um, rim, just to allow, because actually what was happening was the bag was filling the whole bucket and uh, the water was kind of just squirting up above the bag rather than dropping through. Um, I guess what I could do is just sit it there and let it drain, but we brew in the bag. They reckon you could get about a gallon out of out of the grain. So you've really got to, unless you just want to wait for ages, you've got to give it a squeeze. So um, has it made less mess? Yes, uh, and that was the goal. So I think all in all, worth doing again. Uh, might have to just tweak the process a little bit. Uh, we'll see. Nearly forgot. Pre-boil gravity. Let's check it out. So, what is the expected pre-boil gravity? 
da, 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 da. 10.49, so, right, get a sample, and, da da, right, oi, I've got a squirter, there we go, Right, let's have a look. Right, I think I have got 10.52. Uh, yeah, 10.52. So, can you guys see that? Ten fifty-two. Although, I think... That's obviously coming out backwards for you guys. I think it's 10.52, 10.53. Woo! So I missed my pre-boil volume by a litre, which I'm not too bothered about. Uh, possibly to do with the new bag squeezing method. Don't know. Um, but I'm pleased with the uh, post-mash pre-boil gravity. Uh, slightly above where I want to be, so hopefully after the boil should hit the right OG. We'll see. Right, just getting the old trusty fan ready. I don't have um, an extractor fan system, um, so I have to make use of a basic indoor fan. Um, but as you can see, the garage door, well back door, uh, I've got reasonably good ventilation so it's just a case of blowing out the door. Right, the boil is done, I'm just well pulling some uh, hops and that's been going for uh, 20 minutes or so and I've uh, done that actually and it's on the cool down now so I'm just checking uh, the OG and I think I've pretty much hit it bang on 1062 I think you guys can see that Ten sixty-two. I'll check that on uh, the computer in a second uh, really happy with that. So um, once it's cooled, it's straight into the fermenter and pitch the USO5. Right, we are turbocharging the runoff with the pump. So you just get some really nice aeration going on. Uh, and I will give it a good shake as well before I pitch the yeast. Uh, but look at that colour. I mean, that is... Um, that is looking fairly turbid. Um, and I think that should make for a really nice cloudy IPA. Uh, we shall see. Right, we're on to brew number two. Uh, I've had some lunch. Um, I'm ready to go. So the mash is complete. I've mashed in. Uh, temps came a little low, I think. I left the pump on again. Got to stop Beckham doing that. Um, so I'm going to just recirc, mash out, um, and then we'll be onto the boil and do all good. Just pulled this off the keg. This is a 8% uh, Mexican hot chocolate stout that I put on keg last weekend. Uh, so there's a bit of chilli in it. Um, it's been a little bit harsh. It needed to mellow out. I thought I'd just give it a go now. It's got a great aroma on it. Loads of chocolate. It's got cacao nibs and coffee in it. it smells fantastic. Yeah, it's calmed down quite a bit, which is good. But I 
I think it needs more time just for the, cl- the flavors to um, start to balance out and come together. Um, you can definitely notice the chili in the back. Um, it's not super hot, but it's definitely a little kick. Right, so the uh, New England IPA is now uh, boiling. Uh, just checking pre, just checking the uh, post mash gravity, pre boil gravity. All good. So I've also just weighed out the hops. Um, so this is an experimental NEPA. I'm not running off a recipe. I've, I've created the recipe. Uh, it's using Huel Melon, Balma, and Equinot. So uh, what I wanted to try and achieve was some kind of melon esque. Uh, New England IPA, uh, Balma and um, Huel Melon, so I'm just making sure I'm not going to get a boil over. I think we're all good. Um, you sometimes get like a melon or a strawberry kind of flavour, uh, but I've also thrown in the Equinox because what I've read is that both Huel Melon and Balma are explosive flavours so I sort of thrown in a bit of Equinot which is sort of a classic uh, going to give you lots of tropical flavours uh, also fermenting with conan yeast so we should get some stone fruit kind of things going on as well all good right I've got to go and stir it otherwise I'm going to get a boil over okay we're just coming up to um, the halfway point of the boil so I'm only doing a half hour boil because all the hop additions are right at the end, so there's very little point doing a full boil. It's not necessary, so I'm going to go a little bit shoddy. Um, what's going in? 15 minutes. I'm putting some Centennial in hot side just because I do like a little bit of bitterness in my beer. So, uh, oh, there's the alarm now, so I'm going to add that. Here we go. It's 20 grams of Centennial, I think, in a 15 minutes. There we go. And not to forget uh, a little bit of new nutrient. I'm going to put maybe half a protoflock in, um, in an EPA. I'm not sure. Some people do, some people don't. Um, whoa, that's way too much yeast nutrient. And not to forget to put the uh, immersion chiller in as well. There you go. Right, that's it. Well, pulled done. Um, although the pump did block, which I didn't notice for a while, because um, there's so much hot matter in there. I guess the pellets have gone straight in, so blocked the pump a little bit, but I got it going again. Uh, without having to take it apart and checked the OG and it's coming at 10.56 I was shooting for 10.52 uh, I did add a little bit of lactose um, which I had left over so just wanted a little bit of residual sweetness um, in case the final gravity dropped too far um, which I don't know how Beer Smith accounts for that, whether that knows it's going in at 15 minutes. I guess it must do. Um, all good. So I'm going to get that in the fermenter and uh, then we're just going to have to wait two weeks and then get it on keg. So see you in two weeks. Right. I made a yeast starter with my Conan slurry that I left in the fridge. I just need to remember not to pitch the stir bar. For the win. There she is. 
Here they are, guys. Two fairly nice looking beers, I would say. Lovely head um, on the uh, New England IPA. That's the one on the right. And the IPA, um, which is on the left, which I poured first, so head retention's okay. Um, right, I'll cut to um, me trying, tasting, giving you some thoughts on the beers. So, welcome back, chaps. Um, obviously, for you, it's just been 30 seconds. For me, it's been a couple of weeks. So, I've had these on keg for, uh, I reckon, maybe three weeks, I think. Um, I'm not going to lie, I've tasted them quite a few times. Um, took them to uh, Brew Club last night, got some um, pretty good feedback, especially on uh, the New England IPA. Um, so I was really pleased with that. So let's start with this. So this was the Melon, Huel Melon, Belma and Equinot New England IPA. IPA. It came in at 5.9%. Um, really lovely body on it. Um, really nice colour. That was kind of the colour I was aiming for. It's not like um, really really kind of murky but it's definitely like as you can see you definitely can't see through it um and so the aroma as you'd expect is kind of tropical fruits i think there's some citrus in there and i think uh, like a papaya kind of uh, aroma and a little bit of pepper Picking up a little bit of um, green, kind of green pepper, maybe pine kind of thing, uh, which apparently you can get from Equinox, which is interesting. So cheers, guys. Let's dive in. Yeah, I think um, good fermentation. I, I can't notice any of flavours in there. Nice body, good carbonation. Um, very hoppy. A little bit floral. I'm not sure. I'm not sure this is my favourite um, beer that I've made. Certainly, I wouldn't say one of my best. Um, I've had a lot of feedback from other people that have really enjoyed it, um, but I just don't think it's quite um, for me. It's not quite my thing, even though I designed it. And <laughs> you've got to try these things, haven't you? But um, there is a little hint of melon in there, like honeydew. You get it more on the aroma, on the flavour, you kind of get it right at the end, uh, which is kind of what I was aiming for. I don't think there's any strawberry in there, which apparently you're supposed to get from the, the Belma. Mm. So overall, a success, a good beer, um, but probably not one I'm going to brew again. So on to... The Kitchen Sink IPA, you'll remember from the video exactly what went into it. It was quite a grain bill and quite a hot bill. Um, it came out at 6.4%, a little higher than I'd actually planned for. Um, <coughs> the main reason I think uh, that's the um, that happened was I've made some minor adjustments to my process, which you saw in the video in terms of the recirculation. Um, that's the only thing I've changed. Um, and I've overshot slightly on my efficiency. I have reduced my efficiency slightly as well in Beersmith um, to around, I think it was like 68, 70%. And I ended up shooting kind of hitting about 72 or something in that region. So, um, I was looking for a proper strength IPA. It has cleared up actually a little bit. Um, you might be able to see that. Um, it's still not a clear beer. Um, 
but it was definitely murkier when I first put it on keg. Um, so it's clearing up, slowly clearing up. Um, but overall, um, it's not as hoppy. You definitely get the mosaic, um, but it's not a strong aroma. Um, in fairness, I don't think I put a massive amount of hops in this beer. Um, certainly in terms of the dry hop, I think I just used up some mosaic I had. Um, I think it might have even been a 50 gram uh, dry hop, which, you know, isn't going to give you stellar um, aroma. But uh, nonetheless, there is some there. I think it's also died off over the last few weeks. But it's pleasant. You get a lot of those trop tropical fruits, classic of, of mosaic, which is great. Um, Colour-wise, it's a nice colour. It's a nice sort of copperish colour. It's sort of at that stage between being a cloudy beer and, and not a cloudy beer, where it just, yeah, maybe doesn't look as appealing, I think, as when it was just cloudy. But um, cheers, guys. Let's dive in. Yeah, it's uh, a little sweeter, I would say. Um, possibly because of the higher ABV. Again, I think um, a good beer, but it's not setting me on fire. It's definitely drinkable. I have actually been drinking this more than the New England IPA. Um, generally the feedback that I've had from other people that have tried them which is quite a few people they've preferred the New England IPA over this um, so that's maybe just a reflection of my tastes which I'm still trying to sort of figure out really in terms of uh, hot profiles and you know I'm kind of zoning in on styles of beer um, but maybe not necessarily hops and hop combinations um, but I have, yeah I've really enjoyed this beer I think it's solid um, yeah I'm enjoying it there's not really a great deal to report about this beer other than it's alright drink more of it <laughs> I'm not going to have an issue finishing it off so that's it guys um, thanks for watching um, if you like the content of the channel uh, hit the thumbs up um, don't forget to subscribe and um, I'll see you at the next video